Behold, the meter tape. For the next few weeks, this will be your best friend, so let's get acquainted. Unclip the tape from itself and then unlock the arm in the middle to begin spooling out your tape. Spool it out as far as science requires and then lock the arm back on itself so that you don't go anywhere. Collect your data, be a hero, and then reel back in the tape, making sure that at the end you leave a little bit of a tail so that once you're locked off, you can go and grab the clip at the end of the tape and then clip that back to the lanyard. This will help keep you organized on the way to your next transect, or if you're all wrapped up, clip that to yourself and you're good to go. Picking a meter tape, though, is not as simple as grab and go. Every once in a while, these tapes break, and when you fix them, they can lose some of their length. So each individual tape has its own individual zero mark, and two similar tapes can be off by a whole lot. Bam! These two tapes, for example, are off by almost a meter. So once you know exactly where your tape is starting and you adjust your data sheet accordingly, you are ready to start sampling in the pool. Okay, so here we are at the anchor with our tape. Go ahead and clip it. Whoa, whoa, whoa anchoring clipping in we ain't go over any of that who's narrating this some kind of amateur okay grab yourself a knot line form a bite and then we are tying a figure eight on a bite not only does that give you a big loop but also a fatty knot that'll come in handy later pass the loop through the webbing portion of any weight you have lying around the dive locker then clip yourself to the loop voila you're anchored in and the knot keeps it in place beautiful now, if you did forget your knot line at home, don't worry, we got you covered. Make a bite out of the meter tape and then pass that bite through the webbing portion of the weight and then clip the meter tape back to itself. You will have to adjust the zero point on your data sheet, but once you pull in the slack, you are anchored off and good to go in the pool. Okay, back to the original narration as if I hadn't forgotten to talk about this. Sound good? Here we go. Then grab your compass because we are going to take a heading straight out from the anchor. Make sure that your tape is unlocked to start feeding it out and make sure to stay on course. Now at this point, be real efficient. We're doing science, so boom, warp speed. Now here I clip my gauge back in, make sure that I'm organized and I'm going to lock the tape in place right here. Turn around, see how I did. That looks good, so I'm gonna lock the tape off right here and anchor the whole thing with a weight for my first reel out. How'd I do, Steve? That was terrible, reel it back. All right, we're gonna reel this thing back in. The most important thing about reeling back is gonna happen right here. Take a look, the pinch. Bam! Pinching the tape is crucial for an effective reel in. This makes sure that the tape doesn't come back twisted inside the reel, which can save you a lot of headaches underwater. The tape is also up against my chest for stability. Now, once you get to the end, go ahead and unclip yourself from the anchor and get the tape ready for transport. I usually clip the end right there to the lanyard, then reel in the extra slack and lock off the tape, just like so, and then clip that wherever is convenient. I had a lot of stuff on my shoulder D-ring, so I went lower, but if the shoulder is available, that's where I typically clip the tape, and I'm good to go to my next transect. You can, of course, always carry your meter tape underwater with your hands. So let's recap. Find your zero, swim straight, pinch that tape, and don't lose it. If we can do those four things, we're ready for the ocean. Here, within the frigid waters of the California coast, we find the meter tape in its natural habitat. Good meter tape skills will save you a lot of time underwater. So let's go over a few tips that'll really help you be efficient with your tape. For example, one way to save a lot of time is by making sure that your meter tape is ready to go before you get to your meter mark. Figure out beforehand who's gonna clip in and start reeling the tape out so you don't spend 25 seconds figuring out who's doing what and essentially wasting time. The more time you take reeling out your tape, the less time you have to do science, and that's what we're here to do after all. Oh, and if you watch very closely, one of the buddies is gonna kick the other one in the head right about here. Oh, beautiful. Here, for example, I have the meter tape ready to go with the arm unlocked so I can clip in once I know I'm at the right meter mark. Now it's just a matter of clipping in, making sure your buddy is good to go, and then you can start reeling out your tape. Now take a look right here. I'm not that efficient. I was turned around and now I have to find the right heading. This means that of course your buddy could be finding the correct heading and once you're clipped in, you just follow them out. If you choose to do it that way, just make sure whoever's navigating periodically looks behind them to make sure that the person reeling out is not stuck and is still following you. Reeling out over sand is a little bit different. You'll probably have a meter tape run out to find your meter mark, and then you'll drive the stake into the sand in such a fashion to capture 
the tape. Capturing the tape means driving your stake opposite from where you intend to reel out. That way, if there's any water movement or Steve decides to play with the tape as he's wont to do, well, you're still sampling the area you had intended. If you don't capture the tape, you could be off from the area that you were supposed to be sampling. So capture that tape and Steve will love you. Or at least he'll, he'll think about it. Okay, here we are back in the kelp forest. Here I'm reeling out the tape following my heading. But if there was a lot of surge, I would want to keep my tape straighter by doing secondary wraps around kelp plants along the way. That will keep the tape from whipping wildly back and forth as I sample. Now, if you're doing a kelp swap with secondary wraps, make sure you know which buddy is going to count the stipes of that particular macrocystis thallus. I hear some snickering. I didn't say phallus, okay? I said phallus. I felt bad about saying kelp plant before. Phallus is the proper term for an alga. You're welcome. One more thing to keep in mind as you reel out your tape is to try to hug the bottom as closely as you can. These gentlemen went over a huge boulder at the start of their reel out, and now there's a good 10 feet between the tape and the substrate which you're sampling. So make sure that you are running that tape as close to the ground as possible. And what that means is that sometimes you're going to be heading through six feet of understory kelp through the pterogophora before you find the substrate you're trying to sample. Oh, well, hello there. Hi, I found you. Okay, now it's time to anchor off in the kelp forest. This is a greatly exaggerated example. I don't know what got into me, but I decided to do an anchor bend around this kelp plant. But if you just wrap your tape around some kelp a few times and then tuck it back over that tape, and then making sure, of course, that you lock the arm in place, that should be plenty good for an anchor. And here's a great example of a quick, simple, and efficient anchor. Wrap the tape around the pterogophora a few times, tuck back over itself with the arm locked. Beautiful. One way to become a ruthlessly efficient scientific diving machine is to think ahead. So be mindful of your tape, and if you're starting to get low, find a kelp stock to anchor off to ahead of time. These two gentlemen thought that their tape was infinite when... Oh, bummer. There's no kelp around, so there's nothing to anchor off to. Oh well, fortunately no one making a scientific diving tutorial saw that, and then filmed it, and then put it in the video. Picking a spot to anchor when you're over sand is a little bit simpler. Run that tape out as far as you need, and then bury that sucker into the substrate. Kick, push, twist, wiggle, do whatever it takes to get that meter tape mostly covered in sand. And once it's mostly buried, you grab your sampling gear, and you're off to the races. Okay, almost done with this meter tape stuff. Go ahead and undo your anchor once you are ready, and then we're going to reel in that tape, not forgetting the most crucial part of any meter tape reel in, the pinch. Bam! Just because you're not the one reeling in the tape doesn't mean you should leave the tape unattended. Here's one buddy that is fussing around with a quadrat when their buddy is working so hard to get that pterogophora off of the line. Fussing around with the tape and muscling it back in can use up a lot of your air, which means less time underwater to get your science done. So one thing you can do to help out your buddy in a big way while they reel in is clearing that tape ahead of them. You can get any algae off of it early. That'll give them a smooth reel in. You'll be much more efficient. And in general, this kind of thing, it's just good karma. And be careful with that diving karma because if you choose wrong, well, you could wind up with 30 meters of fun in your hand at the end of the dive. All right, it's time to head to your next meter mark. So no need to futz with the tape anymore. You can just hold on to it right there. Boom, good to go for a next reel out. Or if you're a little bit paranoid or it's time to head to the surface, well, go ahead and clip it off somewhere if you don't feel like holding on to it. And off you can go to bask in the glory of a job well done. Let's do the meter tape recap. Out there on the rugged reefs, make sure that you're hugging the bottom with the tape. Also, help out your buddy if they need it. And in all things science diving, make sure to plan ahead for reeling in, reeling out, anchoring. That'll save you a lot of time and help you be more efficient underwater. That's the meter tape, and now it's time to learn how to collect data underwater. Take a look at the next video, Sampling in the Pool.